In today's video, I'll be pointing out some of the differences between Inkscape and Affinity when it comes to working with vectors. Although Affinity is a really powerful all-in-one design tool with lots of features for working with vectors and pixel-based imagery, it isn't always the better option, especially when it comes to working with vectors. Inkscape lacks many of the raster editing features that Affinity has, such as adjustment layers and advanced brushing capabilities, but Inkscape isn't intended to be used for photo editing. It is strictly a vector-based design tool, and because of that, it has far more advanced tools and features for working with vectors. So if you're looking for a design tool that does many things well, Affinity is great for that. But if you want a tool that specializes in editing nodes, paths, and making advanced transformations to vector objects, Inkscape is the way to go. And in this video, I'll be demonstrating some of the more advanced things that Inkscape can do with vectors that Affinity can't. One thing that Inkscape and Affinity have in common, though, is that they're both great for working with the free templates that I send out to everyone who subscribes to my mailing list, of which there are over 200 of them, including logos, textures, avatars, infographics, and so much more. And as a subscriber, you'll be the first to receive the free templates that I send out each month. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And with that shameless plug out of the way, let's get started. Let's start off with one of the most essential tools of any vector design software, the pen tool, which allows you to draw paths by placing coordinate points on your canvas that a path follows through. In Affinity, you only have the three basic modes, the standard pen tool mode, smart mode, which is for drawing curved paths, and polygon and line modes, which are for drawing straight paths. While these modes are all you'll ever need for drawing with the pen tool, Inkscape makes life a lot easier by including additional modes that give you better control over the paths that you draw. For example, the B-spline setting allows you to draw curved paths using straight lines, making it easier to trace objects with a lot of contours and without having to learn all of the nuances of the standard pen tool or tweaking the nodes afterwards. Then there's the Spiro setting, which lets you draw more rounded paths with better flow and consistency, making it a great choice for drawing cursive letters and calligraphy. Now you can certainly draw these kinds of paths in Affinity with a little bit of practice and some tinkering, but in Inkscape it's just so much easier because of these settings. Now let's have a look at path effects, and this is where Inkscape really starts to shine. Path effects are a collection of advanced transformations that you can make to the objects on your canvas. The closest thing that Affinity has to anything like this are warp transformations, which are useful, but also very limited. Inkscape's path effects, on the other hand, allow you to do things like distribute objects along a path, like I did in this tutorial where I was able to create the stitching on a baseball using the pattern along path effect, or the interpolate path effect, which lets you generate similar copies between two objects and then transform them in creative ways, such as I did in this example where I made vector smoke. Or the hatches path effect, which allows you to apply a vectorized sketch effect to an object. Or even the tiling path effect, which allows you to do things like build unique patterns by generating copies of objects and adding modifiers that alter how they're distributed. And this just barely scratches the surface. Inkscape has over 45 of these path effects as of the time of this recording, and its team of developers are always outdoing themselves and adding new capabilities with each update. Another one of the more advanced features in Inkscape is the Tiled Clones tool, which allows you to create clones of an object and distribute them across a grid or around a center point using numerous transformation settings. One of the many ways a feature like this could be used would be for making vector halftones. Not only can Tiled Clones generate objects as halftones, but they also have the ability to trace objects beneath them, allowing you to do things like generate halftone illustrations of a subject in an image, or make a color tracing of an image using dots. Tiled Clones can also be used to fill an object with copies of another object, or even create spiraling objects that descend in size. This tool can be used for so many other things as well. It's one of the most powerful and unique tools that Inkscape has to offer, and there currently isn't anything like it in Affinity. In Adobe Illustrator, there's a popular tool known as the Blend Tool, which creates a series of intermediate shapes and colors between two or more objects, effectively morphing them along a path. Affinity doesn't have a blend tool as of right now, although they did mention that they have one in the works during the introduction to the revamped Affinity app that was released last year. 
The closest you can get to such a feature at the moment would be to create a custom brush by exporting your object as a PNG image, but this approach is very limited, and it's not a true vector. If you're looking for a vector alternative to the Blend Tool, Inkscape is your best bet. It doesn't have a Blend Tool per se, but it does have a handful of features that can simulate the functionality of it. For example, the Distribute Along a Path feature can render many copies of an object along a path, and the Interpolate feature can do so in a way that blends an object's size and color attributes. Neither is a perfect replacement for Illustrator's Blend Tool, but when it comes to a vector-based replica, this is as close as it gets. Now let's have a look at Boolean operations, which allow you to create new shapes based on the intersecting areas of other shapes. In Affinity, you have the basic operations, which are Add, Subtract, Intersect, Exclude, and Divide. Inkscape has all of these as well, but it also has additional path operations, such as Flatten, which allows you to reshape a selection of objects based on their visual appearance, or Split Path, which allows you to break apart an object without its gaps being filled in. These are all things that can be accomplished in Affinity, but Inkscape just makes it so much easier and it saves you a bunch of time in the process. In addition to everything else we've gone over so far, Inkscape also does a lot of the minor things better than Affinity. For example, Inkscape has more advanced settings for working with gradients. It has better functioning and more consistent snapping controls, a wider range of settings for aligning objects, allowing you to distribute them across a grid or wrap them around a polar coordinate. It lets you create vector patterns, whereas Affinity can only make pixel-based patterns. And it also lets you create guides at custom angles, whereas the guides in Affinity can only be vertical or horizontal. The point of this video isn't to put Affinity down. Affinity is one of my favorite design tools. I use it nearly every day of my life to do things like design the thumbnails for my YouTube videos because of how well it combines vector and raster workflows. Truthfully, there's nothing else like it. But Affinity is more of an all-in-one design tool, whereas Inkscape is a tool that specializes in working with vectors. So when I'm designing something that requires advanced node manipulation or path transformations, such as designing icons and logos, Inkscape is hands down the better option. Now I'd like to hear your feedback. As an Inkscape user, is there anything that I missed? What are you able to do with Inkscape that you can't with Affinity? And on the flip side, Affinity does have some vector-based features that Inkscape doesn't, such as the isometric tool or the transparency tool. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments below, and if you want to learn more about how Inkscape works, then check out any of the hundreds of tutorials that I've uploaded to this channel over the past 10 years. I also have an introductory video going over all of the basics, which would be perfect for newcomers and first-time users. And if you really want to dive in and learn everything that there is to know about Inkscape, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 video lessons where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you need it. And best of all, there's no monthly membership or renewal fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. You can even download the lessons in MP4 format and save them locally if you'd like. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below. As always, thanks for watching. 